step into the bustling city streets of the 1981 TV series Hill Street Blues. This show takes you deep into the world of urban law enforcement, mixing drama, humor, and sadness. Get ready for a whirlwind of feelings with surprising and touching moments at every turn. Who is your favorite actor from this classic Hollywood series? Do you have any interesting stories or facts about the show? Share your memories with us below. Keep watching for more cool stuff about the show. Hill Street Blues, which started in 1981, is a famous TV show known for its realistic depiction of police work. Even if someone didn't watch every episode, they still found the show interesting because it feels real and has lots of exciting moments. The show talks about important topics that people still think about years later. It's remembered fondly, like one person remembering watching it with their family. The music is also mentioned for being emotional. People still like Hill Street Blues today, even when compared to new shows. They think the stories and characters are better developed than what we see now. The actors are praised for acting like real people, and some of them became even more famous after the show. In short, Hill Street Blues is a timeless show about life in a police station. It's well written, with interesting stories and characters that stick with viewers. It had a big influence on TV history. Detective J.D. Laro's character in Hill Street Blues mirrored the actor's personal journey as a recovering alcoholic. The show often depicted events unfolding within a single day, providing a unique narrative structure. Notably, Jennifer Tilly and Charles Hayde, who appeared in Hill Street Blues, also shared the screen in Home on the Range. The series offered a realistic portrayal of Laru's struggles and the challenges faced by the ensemble cast, creating a compelling and engaging storyline. Hill Street Blues, a TV series from the early 1980s, saw the premature deaths of three main cast members due to cancer. Michael Conrad passed away at age 58 in November 1983 while the show was still on air. Renee Enriquez and Keel Martin also died prematurely, with Enriquez passing at age 56 in March 1990 and Martin at age 46 in December 1990. The theme music, composed by Mike Post, achieved independent success as a hit song and even won a Grammy Award. Post revealed that his initial intention was to match the gritty visuals of the show with the music. However, he decided to take a different approach, creating a theme that was beautiful and serene, aiming to transport viewers away from the harshness depicted on screen. An interesting detail about the show is the phone number for the station house, which is 555 AT 161. Set in an unnamed city, often mistaken for Chicago, but clearly distinct, Hill Street Blues debuted in 1981. The series, with its distinct black and gold shoulder patches on police uniforms, draws inspiration from the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania Police Department. Notably, writer Anthony Yurkovich departed the show to develop the pilot for Miami Vice. The narrative unfolds around the Hill District, featuring Mercy Hospital adjacent to it, Despite cues hinting at Chicago, explicit references, and clues in the series negate the possibility of it being set in the Windy City. Notably, characters mention our friend in Chicago, highlighting a different locale from where the precinct operates. Meanwhile, the mention of Washington in Chicago underscores the divergence from the presumed setting. The Tribune newspaper mentioned in the show also points to Chicago. However, the actual reference is to the Chicago Tribune, a notable daily in the Windy City. Thus, Hill Street Blues creates its unique universe, distinct from Chicago, drawing inspiration from Pittsburgh. Steven Botchko, the driving force behind the television series, faced dismissal due to internal disagreements and the show's struggle in ratings. Despite being the main creative mind, Botchko's departure marked a significant change in the series. Hill Street Blues achieved a notable milestone by becoming the first weekly television series to secure a $1 million budget from the network for a single episode. This financial backing reflected the network's confidence in the show's potential impact. Edward James almost declined the role of Lieutenant Ray Calitano, a decision that could have altered the dynamics of the series. Despite turning down the regular role, almost made three guest appearances, contributing to the show in a different capacity. In summary, Hill Street Blues faced challenges with both internal conflicts and ratings, leading to Stephen Bochco's departure. The series, however, made television history by securing a significant budget for a single episode and showcased Edward James almost in a recurring guest role. During his tenure on the series, he garnered significant acclaim, culminating in a primetime Emmy nomination for Outstanding Supporting Actor in a Drama Series in 1982. 
Despite his remarkable performance, he faced stiff competition and ultimately lost to fellow actor Michael Conrad from the same show. The depth of his portrayal of Officer Hill resonated with audiences, as did his co-star Sergeant Esterhaus, portrayed by the talented Philip Freemason Esterhaus. Interestingly, the voice of the police dispatcher heard during the opening credits montage was provided by Wendy Cutler, adding another layer of talent to the show's ensemble cast. These behind-the-scenes insights into the beloved series shed light on the collaborative efforts that brought it to life and captivated audiences for years to come. The series Hill Street Blues, known for its realistic portrayal of urban policing, holds several interesting facts. Many of the street names and precincts in the show are actual street names in Buffalo, NY, where series producer writer Tom Fontana was born and raised. Initially, characters Hill and Ranko were supposed to die in the shooting in the drug house in the first episode. However, to justify the series' title, more uniformed cops were needed. As a result, several finished or in-production episodes were reworked to show that both had survived and to bring them back. Additionally, other uniforms parts were expanded as well. The exterior shots of the Hill Street Station were those of an actual Chicago police station. Now no longer used by the city, it was at one time the home of the 7th District, located near the old Maxwell Street Market, and is called the Hill Street Blues Station. It is currently used by the University of Illinois Chicago Police. During Prohibition, this precinct had the reputation as the most corrupt in the U.S. Its captain once had to distribute his personnel roster to mob bagmen who delivered the weekly payoffs because they were handing out money to every cop in the place indiscriminately and cops from other stations were showing up on payoff day. Gregory Hoblet was deeply impressed by the documentary, The Police Tapes, which later influenced certain aspects of the show. David Mamet's wife, Lindsay Krauss, portrayed Kate McBride, making her the first regular lesbian character in television history. After the show, Stephen Bochco produced Ella Law, aiming for a similar quality, but with broader appeal. Ella Law achieved critical acclaim and sustained high ratings throughout its run, unlike Hill Street Blues. Hill Street Blues, a renowned TV series from the early 80s, carefully concealed its setting, leaving viewers guessing about its location. However, subtle hints, such as mentions of Rec TV and Officer Renko's reference to Chicago, suggest a Midwestern or Northeastern backdrop, with much of the filming actually taking place in Chicago. During his time on the show, one of the actors, known for his role as Officer Renko, also pursued a successful theater career. His talent earned him an NAACP Image Award for Best Actor in 1985 for his performance in Amen Corner. The series garnered significant acclaim, securing the 14th spot on TV Guide's list of 50 greatest TV shows of all time. 